Hello and welcome to this video on Animation 2, uh, Lesson 22, I do believe. What we're going to do here is I've got a rectangle uh, on painted on the canvas and I have a button with a, a right arrow, so to speak, and when I click on it, the rectangle moves to the right. This can stop it and when I click on this one, it of course moves to the left. And what's important about this, there's some tricks here that we need to pay attention to. If I click on the one to the right, it starts to the right. If I click on it again and again and again, it has no effect on this. All I have to do is come here and click on the left and it goes to the left. What I just did is important. Watch. I'm going to click on the right one. I click on it again and again and again. It has no effect on this. And when I do this, it moves to the left. That's a very important thing to do when we program this kind of movement because that's what the user expects. They would expect that if I click on the right several times, it just stays what it's doing. Uh, and, and that means I'm resetting something when I do that. Okay, let's look at the code as to how this is done. Let's move this guy up here for now and look down here. Down here at the, at the uh, inside the body, the body element, I have what should be familiar. I have the canvas element, uh, which has the, the height and the width. And then I set up uh, the get, the di uh, get element by ID. This is in the script element. That's in the body element right here. And I'm just filling the canvas with blue. And that's the size I'm making my rectangle. Now, what I have here, here's my three buttons that you see here. Let's bring this guy down here like this. And let's look at the uh, let's look at the three buttons. Here they are, right here. And then let's bring this guy down. There's my three buttons: input type, button value, and it's that one, which is this dude right here. On click, move it, and then the argument is left. And then there's the center button, uh, input type, button value, and it's those two or, uh, vertical lines. On click, stop timer. Okay. And then there's input type button value, and it's that right thing. On click, move it, and then write. Let's look at some of these and see what we have here. What we have here is that on this first button here, what it says is on click, move it left. And the function it's calling is move it, and the argument is left. Now, notice what's important here. Do you see the double quotes out here and out here? That's calling the function move it. What's inside in the argument must be a string, but if I put a double quote here instead of the single quote, that would tell the on click event this is where the, the function identifier ends, which isn't true. So what I must do, if I have another string inside here, that must be in single quotes. On stop timer, I don't have an argument. On move it, I have a, an argument, and so I put in right, and it's a string. But notice I've used a single quote. So that's what's important. So let's see. Let's take a look at move it. All right. If I come up here, I see function move it, and then uh, the, what I have in here as a variable for the argument is called direction. The very first thing it does is that it stops the timer. Now remember what we did here is that when I moved it to the right, click click, click, it, it, it didn't speed it up or anything, and I could just move it to the left. The reason for that is every time I click on either this one or this one, and of course this one, the very first thing it does is it stops the timer. It clears the timer. And if I did not do that, then what would happen, I would have many instances of the same function running, and it would really start messing things up. And I don't want that to happen. So one of the first tricks I want to do is make sure that when I go to the, uh, when I click on that button, the very first thing I do is I stop the timer. Now what is stop timer? Stop timer is this function up here. So you see this function right here called stop timer? It's clear timeout. Clear timeout is a reserved JavaScript function, and it says for the variable timer. Well, how does this know what the variable timer is? The reason why it knows it is because way up here, outside of all the functions, I defined what timer was. I, I put the identifier timer is out here. That's called a global variable. 
And the reason why it's global is because since I defined it outside of all the functions, every function that uses timer, as far as it's concerned, it's the same variable. And that's what I need. If I did not do this, then what I'm doing here now would not work. I need a global variable that every function that uses that variable timer knows exactly what its value is and it's the same value for every one of these functions because as far as every function goes now uh, it's the same variable. Uh, x equals 75 is also a global variable so any place where x is used here and here it always knows the value of x between even though uh, that's used in different functions. That's what a global variable is. And what I've done here where I put stop timer, I have one function, this function here called move it, is calling another function that I define. It's calling stop timer and there's the function stop timer. This is no different from when I call a function down here. So if the direction, and remember this means equal, if the direction is left, then it's going to move left. It's going to call another function called move left. Well, there's a function up there. Else, it's going to be move right. So I don't say that if direction equals right as well. I just say that if it's not left, then it's going to be moving right. And you might say, well, now wait a minute. Why did you put right down here? I had to put something in this argument because this function move it has right here uh, in this argument uh, a, a variable called direction so it expects something to be in there if I leave it out if I leave it, it, something out of here uh, then uh, it, it, it'll give me an error so I, I even though I put right it for this value it doesn't need to see that it's right it knows it's, if it's not equal to left uh, when I call move it then it's got to be uh, going to the right because move it is only call, called by two different things down here. It's called by a button that has this symbol, and it's called by the button, there's move it again, that has this symbol. That's the only two things that can call that function move it. Now, let's see what happens. If I want to move it to the left, my stuff width equals my stuff width. Now, you might say, why did you do that? What that does, that's a way of of clearing the canvas. If I reset the width of the canvas to any width I want, but I could set the width to itself, it clears it. This is a substitute for what we did before. What we did before is that we redrew the rectangle in the canvas color. Remember? This is another way of doing it. We simply clear the canvas. And one of the easiest ways to clear the canvas is just to set the width, reset the width, and it'll clear it then. So that way it doesn't look like the, the rectangle is growing. It looks like it's actually moving. Since I cleared it, I have to restate what color I want because it forgot the color. So I'm saying my fill color is blue. Now, where is, it, where is the rectangle going to be? Well, it's going to be at x minus minus. Well, what that means is it starts out at 75 because that's where it started out down here was at, was at 75. You follow me? And, and what it's going to do now is going to uh, decrement the value of x by 1, x minus minus. Uh, the y value is going to stay the same. And the, and the width and the height is going to stay the same. And here's the set uh, timer equals set timer timeout move left. And here's this recursive function calling itself. And it calls itself one every 100 milliseconds or every tenth of a second. If down here I call the function move right as I've done here, then I come up here, there's my function move right. The very first thing I do is I clear the canvas. My stuff width equals my stuff width, just like I did down here. And then I fill it up again with blue because it forgot what it was. And now, instead of it being x minus minus, it's x plus plus. I'm going to be incrementing the value of x. Uh, and then I'm going to recursively call this. And I'm going to keep doing this until I either click and it gets, gives me move left. Or I click stop timer, which is the center one right here. Okay, here it's going. It's going to go until it goes off the canvas and look like it's shrinking. Okay, uh, we haven't talked about collision, and there, there it's going off the canvas now. So I'm going to stop it, come back here to the left, and there it comes back on again. Okay, so the the thing is, is that is that um, clear timeout timer, uh, clear timeout 
is a standard uh, uh, JavaScript function. So there's how we did uh, the uh, 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 animation 2 for this uh, using a few tricks that are important. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.